Piotr Szynkarczyk, Director of Institute, Research Institute for Automation and Measurement, PIAF, Poland. Mr. Chairman, welcome and floor is yours. Thank you very much. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It is my great pleasure to be the chairman of today's session, technological session, which will be mainly about uh, robotization. So, general plan is that we will have uh, at this moment two hours of uh, uh, talk about <clears throat> development trends, opportunities and barriers of robotization of the European industry. The first two hours will be from the scientific point of view and then we will have 15 minutes break and it will be at 11 after which we will have the second part of today's, ses today's conference. It will be second session and it will be uh, the, the, about the same topics but from the industrial uh, point of view and the leading uh, role for this session will be representatives of KUKA uh, and then, then we will have a lunch break. Uh, it will be between uh, 12.45 until 2 p.m. and uh, the last part of today's conference is the session uh, also from industrial point of view and the leading uh, uh, industry will be from the point of view of uh, the FANUC company. After which, uh, we will have the closing session of the whole SETEF forum, which will be held also in this room. Uh, okay, so coming back to uh, what we'll have to, uh, on, the first, on the first session, uh, it is divided into two parts. Uh, the first part is uh, uh, focused on the development uh, trends, opportunities and barriers, but from the point of view of scientists, uh, with a little bit shift towards the mobile robotics and artificial intelligence. And we have a very good mix of international representatives. Uh, we will have uh, uh, the first part <coughs> I would like to invite uh, uh, <coughs> the, uh, Mr. Professor Ivan Petrovich, uh, who is the Professor of Department of Control and Computer Engineering, University of Zagreb, and the country is Croatia. Uh, the second person, I please have take your, your seat. Uh, then Professor Burczyński from Poland. Uh, so please come to, to us. Uh, this is a professor at Krakow University of Technology. Then I would like to invite Professor Ivan Kiv from Ukraine, uh, Professor at Lviv Polytechnic National University, and Professor uh, Ude from, from Slovenia, uh, who is Professor at Josef Stefan Institute Ljubljana. And today's session is organized in such a way that uh, our guests will uh, give the presentations. The first present, press presentation will be given by Mr. Professor Petrovich, and uh, you have 20, 20 minutes. <laughs> so I will try to keep our time. So the floor is yours. And please your, use microphone. This, you can use this. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. It is my great pleasure and honor to be here with, uh, today with, with you. And I would like to thank organizers for inviting me. Uh, my talk will be on mobile robotics and AI in robotization of the European industry. Uh, so I'm uh, at the University of Zario, Croatia, where I'm director of Laboratory for Autonomous Systems Mobile Robotics. Before I start with my presentation, just a few words about my lab. So we are, uh, about 20 people, four uh, professors, three postdocs, 11 PhD students, and two project managers. 
and uh, annually we usually have about 60, 70 Bachelor of Master of Science students working with us. Why not? Does it work? Okay. Uh, so today we are aware of uh, global challenges. We know for climate, uh, this uh, Green Deal, European initiatives and uh, digitalization, but uh, most direct impact on robotics and uh, vice versa, robotics could have more direct impact on demographic uh, trends in the, mostly in these uh, the economically developed countries. Not so long the forecast was that robots will replace human labor and uh, two car jobs. Uh, it was forecast that by 2050, uh, half of our jobs will be, uh, uh, human will be replaced by, by robots. But today, the, uh, we are aware the trait is quite opposite. Actually, we are, uh, the question is whether the robot will be uh, developed fast enough uh, to help us save world economy for worker shortages. We are really lacking uh, workers in, uh, especially these uh, developed countries, to keep sustainable growth of our economies. This is unfortunately, this is a special case in our region, Central Europe, uh, Europe, uh, one of three mo uh, of most uh, uh, regions where a dramatic drop of population is expected, unfortunately. So we are really desperately needs robots in, in our region. But of course, uh, that is, I hope through this my presentation, I will try to uh, convey, uh, convey the message that uh, we not be, should not be only the user of these robots, but also to participate in the, their development uh, and the manufacturing. So what are the trends in robotics? Last year, more than 500,000 units Industrial robots were sold and installed. Uh, so the current stock of robots, is, uh, robotics, robots, industrial robots is about 3.5 million euro, uh, units, where major customers are electronics, then automotive, and then metal and machinery industry. And the stable growth about 7% of uh, annually is expected. But about more than half of those robots last year were installed in China. Uh, only among 15 largest markets for robots, one only Poland from our region is at, at the 15th place on this largest market of industrial robots in start last year. Uh, from these the traditional robots take about 95% of all these industrial robots and uh, collaborative robots uh, slowly have uh, steady, uh, grow, market share grows steadily. This is also one of the opportunity for us. Uh, workers shortages is also present in services. So this service market for robotics is also increasing. Last year, more than 120,000 robots were, were sold for, for professional applications. Here you can see uh, six most, uh, top six application areas for professional robots. Consumer robots, this is a huge market, but mostly vacuum cleaners are the most, those 90 million units. Uh, here is also something I think that is important for us, that uh, about of, out of more than 1,000 service, service robot uh, suppliers worldwide in professional applications, uh, about 40% comes from Europe, come from Europe. That is very, uh, something very important for us that Europe is uh, somehow most vivid in this service robotics. And uh, also the number of service robot manufacturers, 80 of, the, 80, 80 of those uh, are from, from uh, 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 SMEs. That means you see up to, uh, uh, below 500 uh, employees. I see this, this is uh, also, I think, a possibility to so-called, let's say, democratize the robotics because these traditional industrial robots usually manufactured by huge companies like KUKA, today we have Fun, KUKA, ABB and so on, but 
these collaborative robots, industrial robots, and, and uh, also these uh, uh, service robots are really uh, where we could find the niche for our uh, participation and contribution. And also, not only as a user, but also as uh, manufacturer, system integrators, and so on. So, majority of these service robots and also collaborative robots uh, will be mobile and are mobile. So, so that is where we, we focus our research in my lab. So we focus that robots uh, are mobile, but also autonomous. For a robot to be, be autonomous, uh, it should be able to perceive and interpret the environments around it, to understand what is around it. And uh, that is one of the core topic of our research, so environment perception interpretation. Another topic, core topic is localization. Robots need to localize itself in these environments and build a map of the environment. That's the second core topic what, uh, on our research, and I will very briefly say, uh, present some of major results on this. And then once the robots know the environment, map the environment, uh, receive and map the environment, then uh, it could plan the motion and execute the motion in these environments to accomplish the given mission or given task. So, environment perception interpretation, uh, we focus on, uh, are focusing on multi-sensor fusion for robust, robust environment perception. Uh, vision is the most often used sensor and uh, really most appealing to use and really cheap and uh, a lot of information could provide, but it is not enough. If we want that the robots operate uh, uh, reliably in complex environments, particularly outdoor environments where weather conditions could change and all or, or different environments, we, uh, we need really also to fuse different sensors, uh, sensors with different physical modality of operation. Uh, so some of major results in the vision in perception, uh, semantic segmentation is very important to that uh, this is based on vision. The robot understands what is the, the scene uh, about it, uh, what is about it, not only that is know where I am, but to understand where it is. So uh, we have developed one of the most accurate algorithms for real-time semantic segmentation, but there are still many challenges here, like, uh, let's say, to try to uh, use semi-supervised learning to avoid annotation of data. This is uh, the most tedious work today in this. Oh, sorry. I'm... Then another uh, topic uh, in this perception, uh, environment perception interpretation is, sorry. Um, is to detect moving ob objects and uh, track them and also perform sensor fusion because this is usually to have this reliably, uh, perform this reliably, we need uh, collaboration. Major research challenge here is uh, how to detect decalibration of the sensors and then recalibrate them online during normal operation. You know, uh, usually manufacturers calibrate their system or robots or vehicle uh, offline in their factory. There's huge, usually some specialized room could, could be huge, for example, for car, and calibrate the system. But then during the operation, this is the, it could change that some uh, sensors could a little bit uh, move from the, its original position or maybe some other change some characteristics and calibration is important and online calibration is a must because as user you don't need to go often uh, to, to do some workshop to recalibrate your system and uh, this is not an easy task and it was for a long time time neglected now it's really hot topic then localization mapping second core topic i so i'm proud that our uh, uh, soft slam slow, soft algorithm that is feature based visual odometry and slam algorithm that means simultaneous localization of the and mapping that means simultaneous of robot and mapping the environment uh, 
We test our algorithms uh, on the KT data set. Here, the results KT data set is the most popular data set for uh, testing uh, such algorithms. And more than 50, 150 different algorithms were tested. And uh, we have for several years already on uh, highest ranked algorithm, our algorithm high ranks on, the, on this uh, data set. And uh, this really gives us a lot of opportunities for collaboration. Uh, uh, the major perform, uh, major characteristic of our uh, SLAM algorithm is that, that odometry trait, that is uh, ego motion, estimate ego motion of the uh, robot or vehicle, and mapping trait are uh, separated. And with this, we achieved uh, that computational time, computational time does not depend on, on time. It's, it is almost constant during the operation, which is not the case with many others. Algorithms. We tested all of this and applied it on different scenarios from tram car, from the car, handheld applications, library with, very, with uh, the lights off, and uh, wearable sensors in warehouses, in a warehouse operation, where a human wearing such sensor on, uh, with a camera on his back uh, for safety, re safety reason. And the uh, algorithm al almost Without any change, algorithm uh, on this application, also on aerial vehicles, we applied it. It uh, really operates without almost any changes on different platforms. Uh, the main research challenge uh, uh, here: uh, how to also in include semantics in this slam, because with this we could uh, make the, this uh, algorithm more robust. Then also monocular visual slam is important because not only use stereo visual cameras but also monocular slam it could be the only possible solution to some application but also have some other advantages comparing to uh, stereo slam stereo visual uh, stereo vision then also we want to explore uh, new so-called event based cameras not standard frame based cameras we are used on on but event based cameras uh, which has some properties of high dynamic range that means they could work on more difficult uh, uh, environmental condition. And also multi-sensory and cooperative SLAM where multiple of such uh, vehicles or robots uh, will the map the environment and localize them mutually. The third thread is motion planning control. Uh, here are just videos, two examples where we applied our organs industrial uh, industrial environments and left uh, professional uh, heavy duty vehicle and uh, this could problem is considered as sold but there are research challenges now on planning motion in high dimensional spaces see here the simulation video where one mobile platform and uh, a robotic car uh, uh, motion are planned simultaneously but consider that it could be possible to have usually two arms or team of such robots. So we easily came to 50 degrees of freedom. And then uh, also if human uh, also collaborating such team with such team of robots, then you need to have human aware motion planning where a human intention in motion, uh, 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 motion prediction also need to be investigate and we also do that but i couldn't present everything and also manipulation optimization is also quite important to uh, to optimally distribute let's say torque and to avoid the, the troubles that any uh, joints came to the, the, the limit constraint, constraints or singularity okay now if it was about some of our uh, horizon research projects uh, one safe flow project that finished uh, uh, 2020, then a uh, running project iForce, and uh, one project we just won and uh, uh, from the Horizon Europe Pathfinder open project that will start in April next year. Uh, this soft, uh, this uh, safe flow project, uh, research innovation project, the motivation was to enable human enter the warehouse where now nowadays situation is that robots uh, work uh, in fences this warehouse fencing and robot operates and uh, move these rakes uh, this is a, a video from a warehouse close to frankfurt 
when we visited it, there are 75 robots uh, move the track, uh, uh, move these tracks, and then uh, there's a picking station through small window. Uh, person took the items and then ship it. Uh, and uh, usually in such warehouse, 700 robots could be. And the uh, probability of failure of a robot or that something dropped down from this uh, racks from shells is high. And now, now, if human needs to enter, the whole warehouse should stop. This is not feasible economically. So our concept uh, of Safe Project was to enable human to safely enter the warehouse without stopping the warehouse, only rerouting or slow down a, a few robots around it. And we have developed safety concept based on safety vest, where human have on the, on the back uh, stereo camera, I mentioned already, uh, camera, and also has some uh, ultra wide band communication. Uh, and uh, human could enter or pick some, some goods or uh, put on the shelf some goods or repair the, the failed robot. And uh, the RC safety system is, is certified by TIF, TIF North. This was done, hopefully this will uh, come to the, came to the market. In the iForce project, actually, that is, I think that most of you know of this era chair project, this widening project, we got it uh, in the last, last Horizon 2020 call, where is AI for robotics. Uh, so the intelligent robots could be from the two, two views of intelligence of robots, one so-called classical or where cognition is com uh, considered computation. So we call this like, sometimes it is known as digital AI. This is common uh, AI that we know. Uh, the robots are designed standardly, but then uh, AI algorithms are applied to have some, intel to add some intelligence to the robots. But also other approach, uh, like other paradigm is to about uh, intelligence, it seems that intelligence actually emerges from the sensory motor interaction process, processes. This is going to so-called so soft robotics, mostly, solutions, so physical, so-called physical AI. These two approaches are competing, and they are so-called paradigm clashes. But uh, in the future, I think both of these paradigms will be developed in parallel because it depends on the application. But definitely also the soft materials in robotics is one very uh, important topic that will have more and more attention in the future. And uh, with this uh, era chair, we also would like to a little bit address, to address this, this uh, type. Okay, I'm closed. Uh, how, how much, is it already 20 minutes? Okay, thank you. And the third project is fitness project, uh, where uh, we actually, the aim is to develop uh, thin surface to enable robots to sense the environment from zero distance to far field. But this surface will be made of new uh, low loss polymers that can be curved, stretched, and potentially also safe healing. We expect that these new uh, uh, surfaces will uh, outperform uh, today known radar, infrared sensors, cameras. Uh, here in the schools, there are physics, chemis chemistry, chemical engineers, uh, electronics, and I'm the only robotics with this project. And uh, I will ask also, I think, in email to say a few words about opportunities for EU 13, and then with this I will conclude. So we are all, I think, aware of the new program. Yes, the commissioner mentioned it, no, this hop on facility twinning error chair teaming. This is for each of us individually, where we actually compete. But there are excellent hubs and European excellent initiatives where we could collaborate because uh, at least two wider country uh, research innovation ecosystems should collaborate. Also, we could exploit uh, Interreg Central Euro programs, where 224 million uh, euro uh, is uh, assigned to this program for transnational cooperation projects. Also, I think the, this European uh, Digital Innovation Hubs initiatives, each country now we have uh, such innovation hubs. We have also such a hub in Zara where we are involved. And maybe a good a proposal would be 
to somehow motivate the National Science Foundation, foundations of our countries to uh, mutual uh, to fund multilateral, multilateral research projects that could be really like starting points for future joint uh, European research projects. For example, with Slovenia and uh, and with uh, Professor Ude and me and my group and uh, Switzerland with just just submitted three weeks ago such a proposal, multilateral proposal, which is very very convenient. Yes few slides more, but with this, I will thank you. We wish to thank you very much. I can't speak, I can't uh, say this in Poland that this is Google Translator. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much. I would like also to add that you showed on the, your slides uh, the tracked vehicle, which is uh, produced by Docking Company. Oh, yeah. And this is quite famous company in Croatia. Croatia has a good achievement because they are selling those robots to US Army. And uh, America decided to not produce such robots because the robots from Croatia are good enough. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, I didn't, because of the lack of time, I, I, I hope you saw, on the, we also collaborate with him, uh, Rimas Automobili too, uh, this uh, manufacturer of fastest car in the world, electric fast car in the world. Yes. Uh -huh. And so, uh, so also so. We, for them, for this car, we developed a visual, stereo visual uh, localization system. Okay, thank you very much. Thank so, you. Uh, please, I'm Mr. here Professor. the whole day for any yeah. question. Yeah. Yeah. Professor Bolczynski, please uh, take uh, the microphone. And uh, in the meantime, I would like to tell, uh, put an, uh, uh, stress on, on the issue that we have here that uh, I'm, maybe I didn't underline it very well at the beginning, that uh, please uh, take the opportunity to see uh, the perspective from different countries, because each speaker on the session is from different countries. So we have the very unique opportunity to see what is the point of view from different countries. And each of these countries is EU 13 country. So Professor Burczyński, floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, good morning. Uh, my short uh, presentation, it is only 10 minutes. I would like to divide uh, I would like to present some general information about methods of artificial intelligence in the context of application to mobile robots and another application, I mean material science or biomedicine. I represent the Institute of Polish Academy of Sciences, Institute of Fundamental Technological Research. Uh, the acronym in Poland, it is IPPT PAN, Institute Podstawowych Problemów Techniki PAN. Uh, uh, what is artificial intelligence? There are several uh, possibility to describe it. Uh, for me, is the most interesting and good definition given by father of artificial intelligence, Professor Marvin Meniski, uh, according him, uh, artificial intelligence, it is science on system uh, realizing tasks which require intelligence than we are performed by human. Uh, but this definition, in this definition, it is necessary to, to know what is intelligence. Uh, according to the modern definition of intelligence, we can say that it is ability of adaptation to condition due to detection of abstract, abstractive relation, exercise of pure experience and effective control on own cognitive process. Uh, in this uh, definition, uh, we can distinguish um, three groups of problems. One is ability to learn, the second ability to adaptation and in fact, uh, more complicated and uh, is metacognitive ability. I mean, uh, understanding of own cognitive process and ability to controlling them. Uh, it is convenient to formulate a criteria of artificial intelligence, which can be useful in evaluation of a level within the scope of artificial intelligence uh, reproduces the natural intelligence. So um, it is possible to formulate three kinds of criteria. First, it is the simulation of natural processes. 
it is practically uh, well known test Turing Turing test. The second, it is intelligent activities, and the more complicated uh, criterion, it is rational origination. Uh, in, Polish, in Polish, we can see it is a um, rationalne sprastwo. Uh, test, uh, uh, Turing test, it is um, given by Turing uh, uh, in his uh, paper, Computing uh, Machinery and Intelligence, and he proposed formulation of question, can machines, computers think by introducing concept of initiative game. Uh, uh, but intelligent activities, uh, we can distinguish two, two kinds of such activities. It is application of heuristics, and the second is learning, ability to learn. Uh, the rational origination, it is ability of computer system to initiating of activities which are responsible to in specified environment and next to effective steering of these activities. The name of system, uh, we can say the intelligent, when it is originator, not just only contractor of orders, according to prescribed algorithm, when it is the rational originator and when it is entire of its own uh, activities. Maybe I skip this slide. So I can say that uh, rational origination it is the most hard criterion of artificial intelligence. And in my opinion, at present, there is no system uh, which fulfills this uh, criterion. Now I give some remarks about application of artificial intelligence. Uh, the, the, um, the examples which I show uh, connected with the own or some research uh, uh, performed in my institute. Uh, generally, in our institute, we, we use artificial intelligence-based method in engineering and biomedicine. Uh, it is an application of artificial intelligence algorithms to optimal design of engineering system and classification and clusterization of biological and medical data. The second is application of information theory to artificial intelligence in neuroinformatics. The third is the closer our uh, subject of our session, application of artificial intelligence in the context of vision systems and mobile, mobile uh, robots, and for, for application of artificial intelligence to image processing and recognition with the use of ultrasonic data. Uh, we we published several papers on this subject and two books. In the first book, Intelligent Computing Optimal Design, we presented several methods of artificial intelligence to optimize, optimal designs, uh, very, a lot of uh, mechanical systems. In the second uh, book, uh, published by Wiley, uh, we pre pre present also the application of artificial intelligence methods to um, optimization or identification in the context of uh, multi-scale modeling. Uh, first example, it is from formally from engineering of materials. It is application of uh, um, intelligent computer methodology based on evolutionary algorithms. Uh, to creating new 2D materi nanomaterials, and we obtained very interesting new kind of uh, graphene-like materials X and Y, and uh, a new anisotropic size graphene. Uh, the second uh, examples, uh, we use uh, exactly uh, artificial immune systems or immune algorithms uh, to selection and classification of ECG signals by means of this uh, uh, artificial intelligence method. Uh, uh, now I present shortly only um, uh, application of artificial intelligence methods 
uh, to mobile uh, robotics. Um, uh, here is uh, for three uh, uh, possibilities which we obtain. I mean object recognition on RGB and RGB deep uh, images in order to improve um, a robot's knowledge about its position. We use typical deep uh, neural network based approach. Uh, the second, it is the point cloud integration. Uh, readers provide detailed information about distance of abstract uh, sets of 3D. Uh, points. In order to efficiently integrate these points into 3D maps, we use the artificial intelligence based classification method to quickly match the same real world points from different observation sets. And the third, uh, it is the path planning of multi robot system. Uh, coverage problem move robots to, to visit or, uh, every point of a given area. Um, uh, uh, optimal uh, solution of coverage problem are obstacle. Uh, various heuristics, including memetic algorithms, are used to solve specific variants of the traveling Solisman uh, problem. Uh, the next free slide I show some uh, photos connected with the free um, uh, task which I described now. Uh, I mean the application to efficient 2D mapping. Uh, the second application is industrial cleaning and the last application industrial cleaning. Uh, uh, we also have another uh, possibilities to use this uh, artificial uh, research uh, uh, methods to optimization to uh, mobile uh, robots. Maybe I skip them because the time is should be over. So I would like to to uh, here's the two slides uh, and yes. So rapid development of artificial methods, especially application in many areas of science and engineering, including mobile robots, plays the, in my opinion, crucial role. And criteria of artificial intelligence, uh, which I described at the beginning, in the scope of the first and second criterion, are fulfilled in large degree. But criterion three, rational origination is still is still open. And the, la uh, the last uh, slides. So, what is the future of artificial intelligence generally? It depends on software engineering, com uh, computer power, and progress in the development of neuro neuroscience. And very interesting is the concept of human level machine intelligence uh, given by Professor Niels, uh, Nilsson from Stanford University. According to him, there is only 10% chance uh, to obtain such um, uh, possibility uh, in 2040 and 50, uh, 50 chance to 2050 and 19 uh, chance to 1,100. Uh, so thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. So I really regret we don't have time for questions because it should be very interesting conversation. Uh, the question I would ask you, but I won't, <laughs> how many years you think that your developments will be uh, applied in factories? But don't answer, please. <laughs> so, uh, Professor Ivak, if will please take your uh, take the floor, and we really have to speed up us a little bit behind the time. So, please uh, give your presentation. Good morning, dear colleagues. <coughs> How are you? I am from the Lviv Polytechnic National <laughs> University. So, uh, I am from the Lviv Polytechnic National University of Ukraine, and I, uh, as a uh, university, our, uh, it is institution, both scientific and uh, educational, 
possibility to uh, have some connection with both mobile uh, robot and there are still robotics, artificial intelligence, machine learning, image recognition, neural networks, cybersecurity, etc. Uh, I uh, very short overview about this uh, internalization of our uh, university and uh, I scope uh, show scope my uh, attention that there's some problems from our point of view and maybe some st uh, steps we uh, try to uh, to do to realize our uh, needs uh, for uh, the robotization the industrial and another wife in our country <clears throat> so very short overview about the, about our uh, international possibilities uh, as the total number of our application for nowadays only uh, 50 persons are uh, such that received uh, uh, agreement to, to continue uh, some, some works at this, uh, this project. Very short, I show you some possibilities. We are involved in the, some uh, both educational projects and scientific projects, such as Erasmus and uh, Jean Monnet program here. Erasmus plus KA2, Horizon 2020, Projects NATO, CRDF, ICDD, Scientific Ruins, and some grants from the, as you can see, from Shock Company, grant the Agency of Universities of Francophone, Central European Initiative Grant, etc. <clears throat> Here, uh, as example, it is uh, shown uh, our project uh, connected with the e health. It is based on the artificial intelligence techniques, such as statistical models and artificial intelligence met methods for personalized. personalized risk prediction, the prevention method built on modified associative rules and sequential rules, probabilistic neural networks and its modifications for online diagnostics and target intervention. Such product for nowadays is prepared in our university. What the barriers for robotization from our point of view? <coughs> Besides the nowadays cruel situation from our aggressive neighbor, uh, there are the bureaucracy with the nowadays imperfection war, the high robotic costs for our country, they need some outside financial support, and the weak relationship between industry and universities in this field, and there is not enough qualified person in robotics for nowadays. What we... Uh, so uh, see the ways to, to problem solving uh, is uh, the follows to adopt the experience of the West European universities in the field of robotization to show a co collaboration with consumers of the robotics to recognize its current needs for example if such uh, possibility was with Gabriel Plant in Slavuta in Ukraine but unfortunately is uh, nowadays at the rockets uh, from Russia because this, it was planned before the war to share cooperation with the robot manufacturers for example KUKA, Siemens uh, yes, uh, some Siemens for nowadays uh, has the laboratory uh, scientific, uh, scientific and educational laboratory in our uh, for, for controllers, Siemens controllers in our university. For its competence educational center foundation in the universities, both 
for students and external consumers using. So such possibility, it will be very helpful for university to prepare the qualified personnel for the robot using. <clears throat> what is uh, in our university, we have also in, there is in the preparation stage, agreement between German company Rauschert, Fraungofer Institute, Technical University of Berlin, and our Leo Polytechnic University on robots education. It is uh, represent, uh, represented by the, our colleagues from the Rauschert company, um, uh, Herr uh, Michael Müller, and it is very successful way as we can see. There are good experience for knowledge exchange and personal contacts established from the Central and East European countries. Dr. Wertrop provided about uh, 10 years by Professor Krzysztof Kluszczyński, the head of the Polish Association uh, for the um, Theoretical and Applied Electrotechnics. It's very useful uh, platform to, to for young people to meet one another and in the future to have the possibility to prepare some common uh, projects. Possibility for, for practical training in industry ex ex enterprises given by both agreement with company Rauschert as well the, uh, with Association of Polish Electricians, SEPS, Towarzyszenie Elektryków Polskich, especially there is good relationship with the Central Quarter and Zeshov, Radom, Katowice and Wrocław branches. Mentioned above also give possibility to take off problems for tutorial cases, course and qualifica uh, qualification projects, not only learning robot operation, fault recognition and reparation, but also spe specialized device, smart processes designing. You see here is some the example of the master, uh, master work prepared by the hardware. And nowadays it is as the PhD thesis prepared as the software for the uh, some device for expecting uh, uh, quality manipulator for the Rauschert company. Uh, problems of digitalization in Ukraine and integration into the European world. The most of the existing old digital systems and electronic database till 2014 were actually developed without taking into account the possibility of its integration into European and world systems. Therefore, they need to be modernized or developed from the very beginning. It is yet in sufficient level of digital information protection, which lead to the leakage of information that provides an opportunity to carry out various operations without authorization up to alienation of business property, obtaining loans from banks of on false ground persons. It is necessary to develop digitalization rules oriented towards the European Union about systems, to war them in Ukraine and oblige the ministers and departments to follow them during development, modernization and using the following systems, to develop and agree, including with international stakeholders, interested individuals and legal entities, general functions, principles, approaches to building and structuring IT systems and solving the problem of the information security. There is important to participation of Ukrainian stakeholders in the development of such a white book so that the document is per perceived during developments. This will help avoid its opportunity during implementation. For the implementation of the specified recommendations may be used the Institute of the Chief Technology Officers at the state and the ministers' levels as well as the legislative 
and uh, judi judicial, the, the judicial branches at the stage level registers, departments of ministers, etc. The main areas. I propose maybe we could end at this as the conclusion. Mm -hmm. So uh, maybe I will um, some make some comment uh, yes. because sorry we have to interrupt and end now. Uh, I think that on behalf of my colleagues from our uh, Europe countries, I can assure you that we will do our best to invite you to all uh, EU funded projects to help you re rebuilding your uh, science and industry. And among uh, very big amount of bad things what happened in Ukraine, there is some good thing, I suppose, because you can start from the scratch. It happened in Poland. In the beginning, we had a very bad banking system. And uh, uh, we started to improve it. And now we have credit cards. Uh, everybody has account and so on. We don't pay by uh, checks like in USA. So uh, our banking system is very modern because we built it, it uh, very lately. <laughs> so probably the same thing could happen in Ukraine after everything ends with Russia. Maybe you will be a very fast developing country. I hope also with the help of your uh, Eastern countries' friends. So thank you very much for your I presentation. I hope so. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for attention and sorry for some delay. Thank you very much. And Professor Ude from Slovenia, please take the floor. Um, uh, hello, everyone. So uh, I would like to first thank to the organizer to organizers to, for inviting me here. So it's a great pleasure to be here in Poland. It's actually the first time I'm able to stay in Poland overnight and enjoy the nice city of Wroclaw. So thank you for the invitation. So I come originally from Jozef Stefan Institute, which is the biggest research organization in Slovenia. We are about uh, 1,200 researchers and technicians uh, um, active mainly in the areas of physics, chemistry, engineering, and computer science. So I'm heading the department of uh, automatics, biocybernetics, and robotics, and we are interested in developing uh, new robotics technologies uh, that enable new applications, so basically in basic robotic research. But on the other side, we are also doing applications, so trying to use these results to actually um, create new applications of robotics. Um, so, um, what kind of systems do we need so in the future so that we will have more robots around and, uh, and uh, so that the robots will be able to actually uh, um, solve the problem of uh, lack of workforce that we have at the moment in Europe? So, first of all, we need more reconfigurable and modular systems. So, this is because um, modern production is becoming uh, is actually becoming more um, is becoming uh, is becoming uh, is focusing more on small lot sizes, so on small production series, on customized products for the customers. And if you want to apply standard robots, which are good for big production lines, this, uh, they are not flexible enough. So with modularity, you enable bringing new um, uh, new uh, <clears throat> new capabilities to your to your production line. And with reconfigurability, you enable the you enable the um, uh, uh, the the workspace of the robot to be reconfigured for new applications. So in our department, for example, we developed the um, concept of uh, of uh, robot supported reconfiguration that you can see in this video above, where actually the robot itself prepares the workspace so that it is uh, so that a new a new a new production can start in this uh, workspace 
So another another area of uh, advances are needed uh, uh, is robot programming. So here we are lucky that recently collaborative robots have been introduced, and there's very much uh, uh, um, there's very much uh, easy is the uh, application of programming by demonstration technologies. Since now we can simply guide the robots to perform a certain task, like you can see in this video below, and basically by <clears throat> by showing how how to do the task, we can program fairly complex behavior the behaviors that involves contacts with the environments, force control, which would otherwise be very tedious to program. So this also helps you, for example, to transfer the knowledge from the skilled workers to the robots. So the skilled workers often are not really able to explain how they are doing the task, but they, uh, they can very much show the, to the robots what is the best uh, way to do the task. And uh, so this way we can create better robots. Finally, we, use more, we need more AI, of course, in our robotic systems. So in the... <clears throat> Um, uh, as has already been discussed today, we need to have uh, our, <clears throat> our future. Our future robots needs to make decision what kind of uh, operations should actually be executed in the cell. And, uh, and this is uh, only possible through application of AI technologies. So here, learning from data is, uh, is uh, very important. <clears throat> Um, so the robotics community has been aware that uh, uh, it is uh, of uh, many problems that exist with the application of the uh, with the idea wider application of AI and robotics applications. So already ten years ago, actually, there was a big uh, initiative to call robot companion to into uh, to uh, to uh, combine AI, robotics and AI in a flagship project. So unfortunately, this uh, initiative, this European initiative was not successful, which was a pity because if it was successful, we would have a big robotics program, uh, robotics and AI program just at the moment when AI, uh, when, when the current boom of AI started. Nevertheless, the robotics community has been trying to actually um, start some big, uh, this sort of bigger projects. So, and this year there was one initiative that was successful called European Network of Excellence Centers in Robotics, which actually aims at achieving transferable embodied AI, which is considered uh, one of the most fundamental scientific and technolo techno technological challenges that is currently, currently hindering the breakthrough of AI-powered robotics. So essentially, the problem in robotics is that the data is not so easily available as in some other application. So if you are doing, if you're applying AI technologies to computer vision, you can normally get your data from internet and the the, the amount of data is uh, almost infinite, whereas in robotics, you need to uh, tailor the data to your system, and uh, this is very time consuming. The amounts of data are, are small, and you need to do, uh, so basically this uh, makes the, these technologies of AI that are actually so successful today um, not applicable to robotics. So the way how we are trying to address this is transfer learning. So essentially, we need to be able to transfer the data from, uh, from one robot to another. We need to tr uh, transfer the data between different applications. And uh, this, this way, we can finally um, generate more efficient robots. So um, I would like to give you one example of how AI can actually help robotics. And uh, this, is, uh, uh, this is from uh, Horizon 2020 uh, re Research and Innovation Action that I'm coordinated, coordinating called uh, the configuration of a robotic cell for the recycling of electronic devices. So um, uh, what is actually the problem? So 
We all have a lot of electronic devices at our homes and these devices are disposed at some point and they need to be recycled. And currently uh, how this is done is using something called crush and separate approach. So essentially the electronic devices are crushed into small pieces and then they are somehow, and then these uh, small pieces are some sort of physiochemically separated into reusable components. But there is a problem with this because uh, electronic devices, devices contains dangerous materials such as, for example, batteries. And before you can crush and uh, before you can crush them, you should actually remove these device, this, uh, these components. And this is still done manually. But of course, it would be nice if the robots could do this. The problem is that there is a large variety of devices. They came in different uh, uh, states of wear and tear, so damage. And this actually makes the application of standard robotic technologies, uh, I, mean the, I mean, the application of pre-programmed robots uh, impossible. So the, what we are trying to do in this project is to design an approach to actually dismantle um, uh, electronic batteries from electronic devices. So here you can see an example how a heat cost allocator is dismantled, uh, the battery is dismantled from the heat cost allocator. So for for this we need to we need we, we need a lot of intelligence. So uh, some intelligence can be put into the hardware itself. So you could see at the beginning that uh, we are actually using soft hands, which allows us to easily grasp objects of different shapes without doing accurate planning. And then we also need a lot of learning and adaptation. So the problem is that uh, when these devices, um, uh, when a new device comes, it can be a little bit different from the previous one. So we need a good vision actually to to predict what the actions uh, should, uh, which actions should be applied to dismantle this device and finally to get the parameters and possibly the robot should actually adapt its actions online to the current uh, to the current object so the project is still going on and hopefully will be successful until the end of the project um, so i'll conclude my talk with uh, how how the um, uh, I think that the EU 13 countries could actually get more involved in the, in the EU initiatives. So we have nowadays a lot of problems with the brain drain, of course, in most of the EU 13 countries, certainly in Slovenia. And uh, so it's a problem, of course, if the best researchers leave. But maybe we do have some advantages as well. So, and this is that uh, a lot of industrial production is actually moving in uh, EU 13 countries. So, and the EU programs actually support including companies into the into the into the European projects. So basically, especially small companies, there's ma there are many opportunities in European program programs for small companies. But of course, they uh, cannot really write good proposals, and they often do not have knowledge to get involved in the in this program. So maybe if there is a better connection between industry and academia in our in EU 13 countries, then we can actually be quite successful in uh, some of the European calls. So thank you. Thank you very much. Well, that was very interesting presentation showing also environmental protection. So this is also additional uh, problem which we have to address somehow, not only the uh, industrial uh, uh, speed of production, not only. So that concludes the first part of the session. Please don't leave the room because now we'll have just change to change the presenters. So thank you very much for your attention and for your participation in this part. Thank you. So now I would like to invite uh, for the next part uh, from Hungary, uh, Professor Galambos, or Galambos, I don't, I'm not sure if I speak it correctly. 
<laughs> okay. Uh, and he is from uh, Obuda University in Budapest. Uh, then the next person is Professor uh, Butchkinas. Uh, Butchinskas, yes, of course. <laughs> Sorry. Professor at Vilnius uh, uh, Gedimnias Technical University, it is Lithuania. Uh, Professor Hosowski from Slovakia. Uh, Professor at Industrial Engineering at Technical University of Kosice. And Professor Otto from Estonia, uh, who is professor at Tallinn University of Technology. So again, uh, four persons for four different EU 13 uh, countries. So the first, uh, I would like to give the floor to Professor uh, Galambos from Hungary. Yes. Thank you very much uh, <clears throat> uh, for the uh, nice introduction. Uh, so please uh, uh, receive my um, short presentation about the trends, challenges and opportunities in robotization in uh, the European uh, industry. Uh, this will be a personal viewpoint from the laboratory floor. I don't want to um, have, uh, give some evangelism or, or any very serious uh, stuff. Uh, just I want to share my opinion uh, about uh, these uh, uh, topics. Uh, so my uh, laboratory is a small lab in, in uh, Budapest. Uh, we are uh, 15 uh, full-time uh, people all together uh, and some uh, uh, resident students, uh, masters and uh, PhD uh, uh, students. We are dealing with uh, advanced applied robotics, uh, uh, especially um, uh, some cloud robotics application and medical uh, robotics, visually says using the current buzzwords, industrial and medical cyber physical uh, uh, systems uh, to, uh, to name the child. Uh, let me uh, say something about uh, our name giver professor, uh, Tony Baitsi, uh, who is uh, probably the most, most famous Hungarian roboticist, uh, uh, born in uh, Budapest, uh, but uh, uh, migrated to the US, uh, where he was working for the NASA JPL for more than 30 years, establishing the uh, space robotics department and uh, developed uh, many things. Uh, and uh, he's uh, the, the funding member of uh, IEEE uh, Robotics and Automation Society. Unfortunately, uh, in uh, 2015, he uh, passed away, uh, but we are very proud of uh, him uh, to, to let us use uh, his name. Uh, our mission in the lab is um, the end-to-end -end innovation uh, model, uh, representing um, the exploratory research, uh, system integration, and the practice-driven uh, uh, R&D. And the, the staffing is, uh, um, uh, is, is hired accordingly. So we have uh, mathematicians, uh, we have uh, mechanical, electronical uh, engineers, and, uh, and uh, IT uh, guys uh, as well in, in the lab. Just a, a picture uh, how we uh, live uh, every uh, day uh, for a uh, spinal uh, surgical uh, system. Uh, we, we have just installed four Kuka uh, uh, Eva Med uh, uh, robots, and I had to took this picture because uh, it was a funny day uh, in the lab. We also have a maker space just next door, uh, the, the, the research lab, because we think it is very important to, uh, to have the agile ability uh, to, to, to produce the prototypes immediately. So what I, what I think on Monday, I want to try on Tuesday or Wednesday, uh, and thanks to the uh, immediate uh, actions uh, and uh, the prototyping technology, we can, we can do that. Um, uh, Eva asked, asked me to, to show some recent uh, uh, projects uh, to, to make the presentation um, a little bit more in interesting, so not only the general uh, stuff. So I, I want to uh, show, for example, a, a recent uh, uh, domestic uh, research projects aimed at uh, moving uh, pathological slides uh, by uh, robot uh, arm. I don't know uh, if it is stuck, yes. Uh, very good. So together with the Hungarian um, company, uh, we, uh, we started a, a new development to archiving uh, microscope uh, slides autonomously and uh, applying a vision-first uh, uh, approach uh, 
the robot is able to detect uh, the, this uh, uh, slide holders, uh, slide uh, boxes, and then the uh, individual uh, slides uh, using uh, machine vision uh, technology, uh, classical machine vision combined with, uh, with uh, neural networks. Uh, and uh, the, the project is now in a very good uh, situation. Uh, hopefully we can uh, commercialize the product next uh, year with uh, 3D Histic LTD. It's a good uh, combination of, uh, of the classical image processing and, uh, and uh, the deep learning based um, uh, segmentation, uh, for example, that it's a, a usual approach in, in many robotics uh, projects. Okay, uh, are you prepared for something bloody? If you are, then I will show some uh, interesting pictures about a uh, Salter House uh, robotics uh, research uh, in uh, pork uh, processing. Uh, we are involved in the Robuchair uh, project uh, with uh, partners from Norway and Den Denmark and the Ukraine uh, as well. Um, uh, so we are responsible for uh, designing a robot gripper to remove all the uh, instantins from the uh, from the pig, uh, and uh, in a uh, an experiment at slaughterhouse we uh, we carried out some experiments measuring the force interactions uh, between the gripper uh, and the, uh, the 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 parts of the. Uh, uh, the, the pig, the trachea, and the whole intestine uh, using uh, six uh, axis uh, force torque uh, sensors and the, the gripper prototype. Now this project is uh, a more advanced uh, phase. Uh, it is uh, already tested with, with robotic arms. Okay, and let's turn into the core topic uh, of the presentation. Uh, what trends that make sense uh, uh, currently in robotics? What challenges are at hand? and uh, uh, how to make it uh, uh, better. Uh, so, as many presenters uh, uh, formerly explained, the embodied uh, AI. This is a, a, a mega trend uh, when we are using the latest AI technology uh, and the, uh, the result of the inference is going to a servo drive and uh, something has happened uh, physically. Uh, this is the, the, the main uh, uh, covering uh, uh, approach uh, today uh, in, in robotics. And one other one is the, uh, the concept of augmented human. So uh, now in industrial applications, we have to consider uh, uh, the human capability uh, extended with, uh, with, uh, with mixed uh, reality and, uh, and, and such uh, technologies. I am, uh, as a person, I'm completely different with my smartphone and without my uh, smartphone. And uh, the continuation will be the difference between a human worker without a mixed reality headset and with a mixed reality headset. So I'm uh, very curious about the uh, progression of next few years and uh, we are really committed in uh, joining such uh, research uh, projects using uh, uh, mixed reality and, uh, um, and uh, virtual reality. Another interesting trend is uh, cloud uh, robotics. Um, nor normally, in traditional industrial robots, is everything on board. What the robots can do is inside the, the controller box. Uh, but currently, uh, as uh, the uh, TACO technologies uh, develops uh, uh, quickly, uh, many features can be uh, uh, transferred uh, to, to some uh, cloud uh, infrastructures. Uh, so we have a trade-off now. What should be put on board and what should be or can be uh, put in the cloud, but we have some constraint as well. One constraint is the telecommunication technology. The other constraint is, for example, the cyber security. Uh, who who want to uh, to be uh, uh, open uh, for for bad guys uh, to to listen in the uh, line or uh, submit some uh, some uh, uh, destructive comments uh, to our uh, robots. So we can uh, put something in the cloud, and we cannot uh, uh, put some others. Uh, very interesting trends again. Uh, many years ago, uh, in the shop floor, there were only uh, conventional technologies like PLCs, industrial Ethernet, uh, C++ uh, code, low-level code, and now everything is opening up. Uh, technologies from every corner of AI moves into uh, uh, robotics. Um, 
telecommunication and, and uh, messaging technologies uh, born in, in uh, 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 the uh, social media moves into the shop floor, like MQTT, uh, for example, but I can mention uh, a lot others. And the same is going on uh, regarding the programming languages. Uh, so now Python, JavaScript, TypeScript, ty TypeScript uh, or Rust are fully accepted uh, technologies uh, or getting fully accepted technologies uh, in industrial uh, applications. And uh, what, what could be a little bit surprising, JavaScript is the most popular programming language uh, in the world and Python is the second one. And TypeScript, which is a syntactical sugar of JavaScript, is just coming up. Uh, so um, it's, a, it's a huge uh, trend again. I already mentioned the vision first in, 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 in robotics. Uh, in self-driving cars, there are some companies who, who are really committed with the, the vision first approach like Tesla. And I see something similar in, uh, in industrial uh, uh, robotics. More and uh, the um, significance of, of the vision modality um, is, is improving and everything is democratized. Uh, so now uh, for a few hundred bucks, I can buy a pretty uh, a good uh, uh, RGBD uh, sensors, even integrated with IMU and, uh, um, and uh, uh, many uh, other high level features. And the same is going on in the software uh, world. We have OpenCV, uh, we have uh, uh, vision processing toolbox for Python. We have uh, deep neural networks pre-trained just like uh, YOLO V7 just appeared, ex extremely powerful for, uh, for object uh, uh, detection. And we have the same thing in uh, uh, point cloud uh, world. And let's turn into the challenges. Uh, what challenges we do have, for example, 5G, 6G, we are talking about all these uh, um, current uh, communication technologies, but I think the radio networks are much ahead um, uh, of uh, uh, real uh, use cases. So uh, it's a challenge to find the, the good place and the, the really uh, 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 good applications for uh, for this advanced uh, wireless communications, uh, where the ROI metrics, the, the return of investment, uh, uh, is um, uh, adjusted and uh, and uh, fully justified. Uh, safety certification um, and the, the, the practice uh, uh, regarding the the, the cobot uh, uh, integrations. Uh, so we, we, we see that uh, that was a big hype uh, around uh, uh, cobots, uh, but at least in my en environment, the certification practice could not follow this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, trend. Uh, every uh, certification company wants to certify the collaborative robot cell, uh, cells against the same standards uh, as, uh, as the, the normal uh, robot cells. Uh, so uh, by the end of each project, we, we just arrive in the situation that we purchased the collaborative robot and we purchased uh, uh, security devices, safety devices for the same price, uh, laser area scanners, uh, uh, light curtains and many other stuff. Uh, uh, and it turns out that a normal uh, industrial uh, robot would, uh, would uh, do the job. Uh, so I think uh, we have to... Uh, push a little bit uh, the uh, certification practice and uh, let uh, the, uh, the the collaborative uh, robots uh, uh, does what uh, they are designed uh, for. Um, another uh, challenge I think is the, re uh, the reusing of resources um, uh, of uh, AI. So how to share the, uh, the, the pre-trained uh, knowledge uh, of the uh, of the deep uh, neural network, what are the the good platforms uh, for for sharing the models, sharing the uh, the data sets? Uh, even European Union uh, created uh, the data.europe.eu, but I don't know how many of us using it uh, on a daily uh, basis. And there are some uh, competitors like uh, Kaggle uh, or uh, Fraunhofer also uh, uh, has a, a big data. Uh, repository. Uh, what are the opportunities, at least in Central Eastern uh, Europe? Many of the companies are not yet at the level of uh, industry uh, 3.0, but sometimes only in uh, 2.5. And uh, we see a good opportunity to make a, a quantum leap from 2.5 to uh, 4.0 uh, uh, plus. Um, 
and um, it's, uh, it's an opportunity because those companies uh, do not have to uh, take care about uh, retrofitting the existing machines, uh, but, but can do something from scratch. So buy the appropriate uh, technologies uh, that are already uh, prepared for, for any sort of integration. And the challenge here is brewing easy to implement off-the-shelf uh, solutions uh, and uh, to, to make the, the financial background for this uh, quantum leap. And uh, it's a rather a societal uh, challenge to make the turnover uh, or, or a changeover in the owners of, uh, of SMEs, family-run SMEs, uh, the, the transmission of power from the older generation to the younger generation is very uh, important. Uh, and uh, finally, some uh, pay, pain points, uh, what I would like to cry out uh, here and maybe in the coffee break later on. Uh, so sometimes in some um, uh, uh, funding constructions, uh, for example, in uh, uh, DI uh, age um, uh, uh, two or uh, to the power of uh, uh, two, uh, it is. Um, um, why is uh, a problem? So um, uh, the the structure requires us to use uh, EU finance technologies uh, like uh, Fiverr. Uh, but um, uh, often there are plenty of other open source software technology that can be uh, uh, used, uh, so uh, it, it would be great to uh, not to have this kind of constraints. And uh, we are not very successful actually uh, in, in uh, Obuda University in uh, Horizon Europe uh, uh, program. Uh, and um, uh, for us, um, it, uh, it, it makes difficulty to manage large consortiums or work in uh, too large uh, consortium um, because um, uh, sometimes there is no real deep collaboration when the partner, the number of partners is like 20 or 15. Uh, I, I think the ideal size of a consortium about five or six or something like uh, uh, that. And, uh, and, uh, and other local pro problem is the uh, remuneration of, uh, of the, the personals in Horizon Europe uh, uh, projects. The, the base salary, salaries are quite low, at least in, uh, in Hungary, and the Horizon projects uh, could motivate the pay people uh, to, to earn some, some extra money, but the financial regulations make it uh, very uh, difficult uh, to be uh, conformant. The project-based and non-project-based uh, remuneration um, uh, and uh, uh, the participation in multiple projects make it extremely difficult, uh, uh, the financial administration. So we would like to start some sort of communication how to improve uh, this, this part of the projects. And my very last slide, Never trust in robots. I would just like to demonstrate it, the uh, uh, collaborative uh, robot technology to my students, but the sensitivity of this robot was uh, uh, misadjusted uh, and uh, it uh, hit, my, hit my head. Fortunately, I had this uh, uh, safety uh, head, so everything uh, all right. And thank you very much for your uh, kind uh, attention. Uh, I think we don't have uh, time for uh, questions, but maybe in the coffee break we can talk and continue the uh, uh, discussions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay. Really, thank you very much for this very interesting presentation. Uh, Professor Puczynskas, please take uh, the stand and maybe short, short comment in meantime from me. I think that uh, very, for me personally, interesting uh, thing was uh, comparison, this was the mentioning the both sides of technology. On one, on one side, we have the robot uh, with artificial intelligence, which is trying to be more and more intelligent and human-like. On the other side, we have a human, which is uh, somehow supported by technology and becomes the robot. And both sides of, the, of this raises a lot of questions, not only technical, but also ethical, philosophical, so we can build another conference around those topics. So again, thank you very much, and floor is yours. Thank you. I'm representing uh, Lithuanian Technical University, actually, uh, abbreviation it's come Vilnius Tech and the uh, full name is Vilnius Gediminas Technical University. We are full, full feature uh, technical university and second by size in Lithuania. Uh, and also I represent uh, here uh, Lithuanian 
Association of uh, Robotics, uh, where um, my you know, my presentation is intended to show the main obstacles in the robotization of industry, especially in case of Lithuania. Uh, actually, uh, what was classified that the robotization barriers in the industry can be uh, distinguished in four different areas. It is psychologic, cognitive, financial, and technical. Uh, what I mean psychologic uh, barrier, uh, the main thing is that uh, for many employees it's hard to take uh, robotization uh, by their psychology into the sense that how to, how to deal with it. Especially it uh, appears in the early stages of robotization of uh, industrial enterprise and therefore uh, there was a lot of efforts to insist or persuade the personnel to deal not only the lowest level, but also the middle level of management, management to find the, the way to survive. Uh, the second uh, cognitive, uh, cognitive barrier, it is mainly related to the highest or to top management, maybe to, to mid management as well. I mean, many people not understand uh, how to implement real robotization into their process. And the best examples for that, it is, uh, let's say, sewing machine and printer, or the Gerald Ford's example, when hundreds mechanical horses get tending your carriage. Uh, so this is uh, the one of the biggest uh, issue, the cognitive uh, acceptance of robotization in industry. Financial and technical issues, they are actually clear because everything it costs to do and technically you need some extra forces to do it. Actually, the advantages and disadvantages uh, was taking for the uh, about a thousand reviews and actually uh, it does not contradict any literature uh, based uh, literature based uh, advantages and disadvantages uh, so uh, we are following the trend in there nevertheless uh, what is what is uh, very important in Lithuania the greater safety uh, was accepted as uh, uh, one of the impact, especially in food industry and uh, in industry of uh, furniture, which is, uh, which is uh, impacted by high speeds of uh, cutting devices. So therefore, uh, it is uh, possible to say that we still need to do a lot in the simple stages rather than very sophisticated stages. So actually the level of technology which, which was important uh, by the increasing uh, levels of the, of the sophisticating. So the most primitive task which is easy to understand like a pick a place in fact uh, requires a lot of efforts from our industry because it is related with uh, tools and uh, with a working place preparation so in fact uh, the average price for uh, place preparation for the robot it's about the robot about the robot price and sometimes increase Tool delivery, especially changing tools, is adding even more costs for the working place preparation and typical size for the uh, such robotic cell, it's approximately two times of robot place, especially tool changes. Inverse tooling, it's became uh, a retrofitting technology when use uh, standard tools with robot delivering of uh, product uh, 
is very often in the spot welding, in the uh, furniture industry, in uh, uh, all the available technologies which are going to be massive use. So machine learning in technology, it goes for the most advanced uh, places. It's uh, our electronic industry, uh, artificial intellect, uh, intellect-based solutions. Uh, they are uh, coming again in advanced uh, and mainly now focused in, in Lithuanian industry for the uh, defect identification and defect uh, detail sorting out and cooperative operation of robots machine and person this is the issue which is again remaining hot in our cases actually if we look upon upon the industrial period and role robotic we see actually that uh, the initial pick and place technology it's come for industry 3.0 which is uh, was start but not efficient use and the present period which i am not cut it not to go for away to the future from industry for zero uh, this is the way where robotics should come into power and according lithuanian um, industry uh, uh, distribution and our part uh, for the export i have a 2018 this officially approved the latest year it not doesn't change so much only amounts is changing so for lithuania as you see uh, engineering industry is quite big connecting with machine production and uh, machine component production uh, furniture and wood it takes also big piece like uh, food and beverages. Uh, so what is the most uh, robotized areas in Lithuania? Uh, it looks a little bit funny, but tobacco industry almost 100% is automatized and robotized. It's not allowed human being to be there. It is a issue of security and health. Uh, the other, com the other uh, very big robotized area is furniture and wood production especially furniture production uh, because the very high cycle of uh, detail coming so therefore it is uh, the most robotized and contains the biggest amount of robots and uh, there raises a lot of tasks especially in the flexible and rechanging of detail during the very short period engineering industry for the moment which contains an electronic and machine uh, production industry and mechatronics as well as well it is robotized in moderate scale mm, why because uh, automotive industry which is robotized the most in lithuania is presented in not little farms we, we are producing trailers we are producing uh, buses and special machines but we are not assembling cars which is taking uh, the most uh, welding facilities chemical industry is automatized another way so it is mainly automatized uh, by uh, automotive lines rather than robotics the robotics available there but it is inside the machine and of course the based reason uh, is to pick and place things rather than to do something more interesting so um, there was uh, intended that the big task the biggest task is a programming of robotic machines in the industry but in fact uh, it is not the not the biggest issue simulation is uh, allows to do that many things on place and we are not capturing so much the end of arm tool that's the most uh, engineering time consuming problem what we notice and this is that's the edge what is uh, limiting uh, increasing the coverage of robotics in our industry machine learning technique it's coming 
but they are coming in advanced area they want to reach the things here is shown one of our one of our reasons to uh, remove the uh, errors in positioning uh, this is for the cable cable mounting machine i cannot bring uh, the picture of working place so this is a fitting of wires into the jacks uh, a, a based quality analysis typically it's coming for the details and a based person status evaluation with cooperative robots actually it's coming in place where co co cooperative collaborative and co-working robots coming but it is in Lithuania we have about 1300 places where it started implemented all on the setting up time so that's my that's my presentation and if some questions thank you yes. very much so it was it was very interesting to see all the um, trends various opportunities and activities inside the Lithuania maybe it will be one of the advantages of this forum that we can exchange this kind of inside information what's going on in different countries and i hope we will see that everyone everybody is working on the same subjects and have the same problems it looks like this for this moment so thank you very much again and i would like to introduce professor uh, hosovsky from, from slovakia so please take the floor Thank you. So, at first, uh, let me thank you for uh, organizer for inviting me here. I'm really honored to to be here. And so, uh, my topic uh, is more about, I would say, current state uh, in a certain area that uh, could be quite a nice complement to all the topics uh, that has been. Uh, on, on plan uh, today, so uh, it belongs uh, to robotics uh, that we are talking about, but uh, it has uh, become, uh, I would say, in a way, separate uh, field, uh, which is uh, quite, <clears throat> uh, there is a quite a strong drive uh, towards basic research in this area. So I'm really thankful for our dear Professor Ivanovich for touching uh, the topic uh, at the end of his uh, presentation. So I will maybe extend it uh, uh, a little bit. So, uh, uh, I was asked to present some uh, current uh, uh, state of uh, soft robotics and uh, I will present it uh, shortly to Oops. okay fine so uh, these are the main topics uh, I should talk about so um, there is uh, very shortly so uh, this is extremely large uh, topic uh, that uh, has uh, uh, many subfields uh, currently researched so uh, i will uh, talk about only some of them and the most important directions in uh, r&d in uh, soft robotics then maybe some uh, very shortly some challenges and uh, opportunities in soft robotics uh, research so now <clears throat> we uh, see the main difference uh, between traditional industrial robotics uh, that we have all been hearing uh, up to now and uh, we see also the main difference of uh, soft robotics uh, in structure so when we are talking let's say about arms so we all know uh, industrial arms there are workhorses of uh, current industry so they are composed of uh, rigid links. Uh, they have definite degrees of freedom, so typically uh, six of them in industrial robots. So uh, in this case, uh, we are talking about uh, usual continuum arms. That is well, a very large number of degrees of freedom. And what is uh, the most 
important difference between industrial, uh, typical industrial robots uh, is um, their structure. So we expect it to be uh, composed of, of metals, so rigid material. Um, in a case of industrial robots, uh, in this case, we are talking about uh, soft structure and uh, some advantages of uh, having the soft structure uh, we can see uh, at those points. So uh, we are talking at first about, of course, uh, safety and uh, also resilience of uh, the robots uh, themselves and uh, also lightweight and uh, usually it is expected to, to have lower cost because uh, it is expected that uh, those robots and those arms are pro produced from uh, cheap uh, materials, uh, so uh, they, are, they are soft and they support large strains without uh, failure. So uh, this is the main uh, difference. Uh, I'm also happy that um, our colleague, uh, Dr. Galambos, also mentioned the, the need for safety when we are talking about uh, industrial uh, robotics. Uh, in this case, uh, of course, uh, if we have soft structure, we expect to this, this arm or this uh, robot uh, to be inherently uh, safe uh, when in contact uh, with, let's say, uh, other humans. So this, this is uh, the most important thing when talking about uh, soft robotics. Uh, we'll see uh, at the end of the presentation that there are many barriers uh, that prevent uh, soft robotics and um, soft uh, robot arms uh, to become currently widespread and uh, of course uh, mainly in uh, industry. So there are certainly uh, application fields where uh, uh, it is expected to be accepted uh, more readily, like uh, medicine, but uh, in industry uh, there must be, of course, uh, more fundamental barriers for for that. Because uh, in case we are in a need of precision uh, and on the order of hundreds of millimeters, so soft robotics are not able to to meet those requirements, but soft robotics should not be looked upon that like something that should replace industrial robotics that is not it's it's fate so uh, it should i would say complement uh, the area uh, of uh, robotics uh, itself by arms uh, that are safe and that have specific area uh, of application so these are some of the uh, research areas <clears throat> of uh, soft uh, robotics uh, at first very important uh, difference compared to traditional industrial robotics and uh, its research field that material engineering has become one of the major fields here so uh, the research for uh, soft active materials is very important so uh, basically uh, at the level of uh, fundamental research uh, the researchers are looking for new soft active materials. Uh, there are many interesting properties, but usually they have also many disadvantages uh, that again prevent from uh, current soft robots from, let's say, entering uh, the market. So we can see that <clears throat> we have development of soft active uh, materials that uh, respond to various uh, kind of stimuli. So let's say it can be uh, electricity, uh, it can be light, uh, it can be temperature, uh, it can be heat, some of them. And uh, also uh, hand in hand goes the development of uh, so-called soft sensors. Because uh, in case you are uh, using soft arms, uh, there are fundamental problems uh, sensing the state uh, of the arm uh, itself. So uh, sensors need to be soft uh, as well. So uh, we are, of course, used to, let's say, rigid uh, sensors. They are well, well developed uh, currently, but uh, the development of soft sensors that has soft structure and should be the part of soft uh, robot arms uh, is also 
uh, open uh, problem. So in that case, uh, we may be talking about uh, interesting uh, materials again, like uh, liquid metals. Uh, so uh, resist to uh, sensors that are based on liquid metals, and uh, they can be well integrated uh, into such such, uh, such continuum uh, arms. So we can also see. Uh, that uh, there are uh, research direction at the level of uh, structure. There are various structure. Uh, some of them need not to use uh, soft materials. They can be rigid, but they use some, some kind of uh, compliance. So let's say uh, origami-based uh, robots are using uh, selective uh, compliance, let's say to, uh, to fl uh, flexibility and uh, uh, they are they may be rigid in actual uh, direction so then again uh, another part completely is uh, modeling uh, and uh, control because again new approaches need to be taken so what is uh, classic classical in uh, robo uh, robotics so rigid robotics uh, might not be usable uh, in terms of uh, uh, soft robotics. So there are still uh, approaches uh, when it's really bothering fly. Uh, I'm sorry. So uh, you can see that uh, modeling and uh, control methods uh, include uh, model free and uh, model based uh, methods I, I will be talking about that uh, a bit later and also multimodal behavior so uh, you can see that uh, we can talk about let's say crawling swimming jumping flying robots uh, that uh, comes out uh, of this uh, area as well uh, also we heard uh, we heard uh, today about uh, embodied intelligence so it was mentioned uh, today uh, it is very important concept uh, in soft robotics so in that case we are talking about uh, uh, according to the uh, words of uh, professor whiteside who is um, al almost behind uh, the development of soft robotics that the material itself is controller okay so it can be true to some extent but then you are talking about uh, some uh, uh, some uh, using uh, 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 your body as an intelligent uh, part so uh, these are some uh, important research areas I mentioned materials research and uh, computational uh, methods uh, research and also you see some application areas right like wearable uh, robotics um, and uh, also you see origami uh, structures in uh, uh, at the bottom uh, of the picture so one more topic uh, before I get uh, to, to the end so machine learning uh, so data driven methods uh, are uh, really uh, important for development of uh, soft robotics uh, because in case you are dealing with uh, theoretically infinite uh, degrees of uh, freedom and you are dealing with materials there are typical for hysteresis and time varying properties. So data-driven uh, methods are uh, at the core of the computational methods used for soft robotics. So there are, there are many of them. So we heard some deep learning methods. So we heard about uh, neural networks. So they are typically used for soft robot modeling and also control. So we can see also some commercial products. Uh, so some made made it to the market. Uh, this is not coincidence that uh, most of them are in the form of grippers because this technology is uh, easiest to be integrated into the current technology. So you can see uh, uh, at the upper level, uh, the new nets, so, uh, so pneumatic networks uh, based uh, grippers and also granular jamming uh, gripper made by Empire uh, Robotics. You can also see some uh, fin ray effect based uh, grippers from Festo. So, last challenges in soft robotics. So, many of them are currently present uh, at the actuator's level, at the sensor level, and also components integration level. 
and of course technological oil. So currently, uh, most of the f uh, those uh, products, or I would say, uh, lab uh, outputs, are not at the technological level uh, that could be uh, readily presented uh, into the market. Okay, so uh, there are many barriers. You you can see uh, some of them. Fine. So before I. Uh, finish my uh, pre uh, presentation this is this is the last you can see uh, the greatest drive or the strongest drive for the development uh, in the area of soft robotics so of course us is uh, uh, at the first place but it's interesting that the strongest research uh, base for soft robotics research here uh, in europe is i would say in italy okay so they have very strong background for that so let's say uh, university in, in pisa uh, is is very strong uh, in that so some of the uh, horizon uh, project that are related to soft robotics so you can see scuola superiore sant'anna so this is i would say one of the strongest uh, institutions so maybe we can stop at this moment yeah thank you very much uh, it was the end of my presentation okay, so thank you very much So please, uh, Professor Otto from Estonia, take the stand. And in me, meanwhile, I will tell you that uh, soft robotics, in my opinion, maybe will not ex uh, take place of the hard robotics. But of course, it has a very uh, uh, a number of applications, for example, in agriculture. So picking fruits and mushrooms, because when you do it with hard robotics, you leave the some marks on this, on the goods are not then, they, they have to be reduced by price. So soft robotics is a very good uh, has a very good application. It also uh, in medicine, some uh, chirurg chirurg uh, operations. Yes, this is also the, the, the very good place for soft robotics. So Professor Otto, uh, last but not least, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you very much. I was last, uh, first time here in 2011 when this was my future conference in Wroclaw. Then 2017, I organized uh, my future in Estonia. And when I was first in, in Wroclaw, I, I was uh, surprised at how many young engineers were working at the uh, companies. Now we have also popular engineering in Estonia. And today we have mostly um, uh, startup companies uh, taking the advantage. Uh, in today's presentation, I will show also that what is the situation in overall. Uh, last year, OECD statistics show that, uh, that the manufacturing index, uh, if we look at uh, Lithuania, number one, Poland, number three, Estonia, one, two, three, four, five, seven, yeah, it's okay. And, and on the very, very end is Germany, Japan, France. So maybe we are doing here in, in uh, EU 13, something right, better than old, uh, old um, economic countries. Uh, today, Estonia has a um, lot of startups. Uh, at our campus, I, I'm from Taltec, Tallinn University of Technology. We have uh, founders of Skype uh, established uh, uh, Starship Robotics, and basically, they are now expanding all over the world. Uh, also, Mercedes has a Part of uh, what, uh, part of the company, and basically it's a new digitalized product. Uh, my students are working in this company as uh, trainees, and they tell that it's uh, it's very amazing that uh, you can teach robots, and uh, by AI, they're actually learning the new tricks. So basically, it's a new product of uh, the digital area. You cannot uh, buy it; it's it's uh, only rented out. You cannot steal it because it's the uh, most monitored uh, device in the world, they say. You cannot copy it because yeah, the hardware is cheap, but the software is yeah, unique and it's, it's very protected. And it creates jobs. Uh, all my students are very happy with this robot handler's job. It's well paid. You can do it after hours. Yeah. And um, it also creates its own ecosystems. For example, Mercedes built uh, uh, buses for transportation of robots, not, not humans. And it requires legislation changes, and it uh, 
it also doesn't cooperate with police. We had uh, some, some discussion that, that whether the robots uh, should uh, uh, announce police if they saw something um, yeah, illegal. And the company says, no, we don't want to harm our robots because otherwise people will be yeah, beating or, or, or uh, making harm to robots. Um, regarding my future, um, I'm also part of this, uh, this high-level group. Um, it was created a vision for 2030, and you can see that we are now in the digital transformation, starting circular economy, and that is going on in the future, bio-based ecosystem. So basically, this kind of long-term vision is, is uh, still working, and, and um, also Europe is, uh, is uh, taking it to in account when, when planning the new, new uh, funding possibilities. Um, I'm also part of the Made in Europe uh, uh, partnership board. Uh, in November, we will meet again with uh, Brussels. That, and the, the thing is that, uh, that uh, plans must be made uh, or revised according to the need of the industry. And um, basically, uh, we here, uh, university professors, uh, also see that, uh, that uh, if we plan something in long term, it may be changed a bit and also made in Europe is a good, I think, uh, example that, uh, that uh, the program uh, and its, um, its uh, targets are revised continuously by such kind of made in Europe uh, uh, partnership um, board. Uh, at Taltech we are dealing with smart industry. I'm head of the Smart Industry Center, it's a governmental supported body and it includes self-driving cars, industrial robotics, 3D printing, digital winds, uh, industrial IT and smart grid solutions and includes all the main technical universities in, in Estonia. Um, my specialty is just now, now is the, the digital twins and I think it's a thing what is maybe most imp important for interesting growth also to our local uh, industry because by digital team you can you can do a lot of uh, good things uh, in business side. Basically, it gives you control over the manufacturing robot or production shell, and um, it's uh, one short video also showing here that uh, that uh, how we did our demo centers that uh, you can operate uh, this from home. It was very useful in time of COVID that that uh, all demonstration center with robots you can uh, approach and control it from, from the uh, mobile application. Oh. And uh, here is another example that, uh, that uh, how to control the industrial robot from remote. We have had uh, experiments uh, that our robots are controlled from US and from Italy and uh, yeah, it's quite a promising technology. Uh, it was also mentioned uh, before by Hungarian colleagues that, uh, colleagues that uh, the 5G is important, that the 6G is, uh, is also on the, on the view. Uh, we just started one project uh, coordinated by Taltech. It's a, a 5G timber and it's uh, for the timber industry. Timber is a very friendly material for the 5G because uh, the radio waves uh, get uh, through this easily. And again, the, most of the interest of the companies was to um, establish uh, digital twins. So it's possible to control the, the manufacturing, the robots, and also to sell it to the, to the other partners abroad. Uh, and again, the AI is uh, the, the it's an important keyword here. And that is what one example. Uh, also, we are lucky to have a European Digital Innovation Hub. Uh, in Estonia is small, so we have 1.3 million people. So we have only one ED, uh, and it's called AI and Robotics Estonia. Uh, basically, um, it allows us to cooperate in future with other countries here. Hope to to uh, cooperate and, and basically it also um, uh, gives possibility to do the demo projects. Uh, for example, uh, in previous year, uh, government supported this uh, AI uh, 
by 1 million euros and we do the, did actually seven uh, team projects with with industry local industry and also hospitals because uh, it gives some some visibility and understanding for for um, uh, local people also that that ai and robotics are important so uh, basically i try to keep it short uh, because we are always alive time but uh, yeah in coffee time i'm happy to answer the questions Thank you very much. Uh, I think that Estonia is well known from robotic companies. One of the companies you didn't mention is Mildrem, for example, which is competition of my institute. But I, I admire uh, Estonian uh, uh, works on robotics generally, and also Mildrem is a very good competitor for us. <laughs> so again, thank you very much. And uh, I think that concludes this session, uh, but not the conference. So you are advised to be very quickly on this break, which will finish a quarter past 11, and then we will come back to the topic, but from the industrial point of view, and the leader of this session will be, rep will be representatives from KUKA. So thank you, presenters, for your, atten for your attendance. Thank you. Thank you. And now,